Hello, welcome back to the Cricket Nerds. IPL season has come and gone. Now we're at the World Cup season, international stage. It's going to be a good one. 20 teams, the biggest 20 tournament we've ever seen. Biggest ICC tournament we've ever seen in terms of teams. It's becoming an actual global tournament now, which is, is great. And the Cricket Nerds are here to talk about what's going on. All three nerds together for the first time in a long time, really. Um, so it's nice to have you with us, boys. Uh, and let's just get into it. So 20 teams, four teams of five. Who are we thinking is going to go all the way? Let's just start with the big questions. James, who are your favourites for, for this 2020 World Cup and why? Oh, okay. Yeah, my four, my four favourites are um, England. Uh, because I think they're always in and about. I think they had an absolute howler of a World Cup last time, but I think that that they've got they've got what it takes to go uh, get get at least into that final four. Um, I'm going to go for New Zealand because they always show up in in world events. So I'm I'm, I'm expecting them. I'm going to go for India because I think they're probably favourites for the tournament, and then I'm also going to go for the West Indies. Um, I'm going to rally around the West Indies because uh, I think they've got some of the most exciting players, the mo most explosive players on their day. Um, and I, I think it, it honestly, it could go either way. They could get knocked out in the group stages or they could win the whole thing that they've got a very kind of on or off team. But I think when they're on, they will win by considerable margins and maybe ride that wave. So those are the four teams I'm going for. Ben? I'm, I'm, I'm ex I've really loved, I've I've left out Australia in there, but yeah. that's that's what we're going for. <laughs> we're yeah, making a bold call early. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, I, I yeah, I think also England look really strong. I think they're the way that they've basically dismantled Pakistan in both of the two warm up games. Well, not warm up games, but the T Twenty series prior to this World Cup. Um, yeah, they just the team looks like everyone's clicking. Everyone in the top four five six can hit it just it's just such a complete team um and again coming off the back of a win trying to uh retain the world cup which is always a difficult thing to do we saw in the odi world cup how poor england were at, at, at trying to do that but yeah i i think england will be there india always going to be in and around that top spot um again they've just got such a strong side um everyone that we've seen in that India team has has had an impact in this year's IPL, so I think yeah they just look ridiculously strong, um and 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 definitely ones to watch out for. I'm gonna put um West Indies as well in my top four. Um again they've had a bit of a rebuild in the last few years. I think the West Indies um they've struggled a little bit with their team, make sure that, that, that they've got players that, that, that are playing the international game rather than the um, the ice, uh, the various T20 leagues are, are around the world. But as you've said, James, they've got some of the most explosive players in the world. Like if you just look at what Nick Puran did against Australia, mm. absolutely smashed them all over the place. Um, and then my fourth spot, I'm going to go with Australia. I think that Australia always show up in the big ICC events. Um, it's tight between them and New Zealand. Um, South Africa are one to watch in there as well. It, 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 it's exciting because there are there are seven or eight teams that I think are all really strong. Like World Cricket's in a really good place at the minute. You look around every single team and there are match winners. Um, probably in like the top eight teams, I think there's going to be some very big differentials, especially when we're looking at the likes of, you know, Canada, we're looking at Papua New Guinea, we're looking at Uganda. Um, it's it's great for the game that those teams are in an ITC event like this, but there might be some big differentials in, in some of those games. But yeah, I'm really excited. Zach, what's your top four prediction? Well, I think it's quite a tricky question to answer because of how many good teams there are, as you've listed, Benj. I mean... <sighs> England have to be in contention. Just the way they've played white ball cricket over the last five, six years has been really impressive. And for me, England's seen the most explosive team. Uh, India, although they've got some power hitters in there like Sky, um, Rishabh Pant, etc. 
India generally play the more conservative options in the World Cups. So for me, India, I guarantee them a semi-final spot. But for them to win, we need to see them be a bit more exciting. Um, whereas I think England have that more exciting uh, talent there. That being said, the West Indies is known for not being as quick scoring. We're yet to see what it's going to be like in America. Uh, there's quite foreign conditions for everyone. Um, so I'm excited to see the games that take place there. So India, Pakistan playing in New York, for example, that should be great. Um, but yeah, West Indies for me, that home conditions, um, they look like they've got an informed squad. I mean, if you compare the World Cup with the IPL, the World Cup, there's going to be such a bigger reliance on all-rounders because they don't have that impact rule. And the West Indies, Andre Russell, with both ball and bat, he's going to be really crucial to them. It's just a shame that um, Sunil Narayan couldn't get into that squad because that could have been scary. Um, and then, yeah, Australia or South Africa. When I look at that South African batting lineup and you look at... Um, Heinrich Klaassen and Tristan Stubbs in the middle order and David Miller. And then you've got Quinton de Kock opening the batting. If they fire, then it could be very exciting. Um, I mean, they've got... A... On... Yeah, I was going to say, you. on that, you've got um, some really exciting other players like Britska um, mm. and you've got uh, Ryan Rickleton, who was the top yeah. scorer in the SA20. He looked absolutely dynamite. So th those players... They, they haven't done so well in their in their games just gone but um you know going into a into a tournament where you're going to be facing some teams where you can almost have a bit of a get some rhythm back against some potentially weaker bowling attacks such as yeah. like yeah. Nepal and and the Netherlands um I, I think they could they could dismantle some teams and if they yeah. get momentum then yeah you're right they they could do they could do very well um I'm gonna say, the teams that I think could win, I'm just going to go through uh, because I realise I've said a top four, but honestly, I I really don't know. Mm. Um, India could win. Pakistan could win. Australia could win. England could win. New Zealand, West Indies, Bangladesh, maybe. South Africa, definitely. And Sri Lanka. So obviously all the big test playing nations. And then you never know. You never know. We this could be the year we see like an Afghan upset uh, or may ooh. maybe the USA just come out of nowhere. But um, <laughs> I think realistically, there are a lot of teams that can win this mm, yeah. and going into this tournament, it's going to be a big thing on intent and adaptability to conditions. Because as you say, the West Indies is relatively slow conditions um, a lot of the time, although there was just a match in Port of Spain that saw over 500 runs scored. Yeah. So, you know, it could be a case of um, like really high, uh, really high scores. It could be really low and you kind of need to dig down and figure out what the pitch is doing early. And yeah. then, yeah, the USA is a completely sort of unknown quantity as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah. really exciting. I mean, okay. I've got some um, like quite, I don't know. I, I could be risky in saying this because we know that oftentimes we'll say something on this channel and then it won't actually happen. Um, yeah. But I, predictions wise, I think spin is going to be so much more important than pace in this World Cup. Like you mm. think about how much the ball spins in the West Indies. America, as we said, unknown quantity, but the majority of the later games, the knockout games, going to be in the West Indies. And that's why I've not picked someone like a New Zealand because I don't think their spin options match up with the rest of the teams in like the top eight um, sides. Whereas England, they've got loads of spin options. Uh, India, obviously loads of spin options. Afghanistan, you look at their spinners, Rashid Khan, um, Mohammed Nabi, they've got some very good spin in there. And yeah. I think that's going to play a massive role. Uh, I don't know what other predictions you guys have. That's one of mine. Well, I, I'm interested to, to talk about some predictions. Um, I want to go through the groups and let's predict our top two for each of the groups because that's our, our eights. And then afterwards, I want us to predict our highest run scorer, our highest wicket taker, wow. and our player to watch. Okay. Oh, so wow. we've got some thinking to do. I'll go first because I've already had to think about um, some of the groupings. So I'll give you I'll give you guys a chance to have a quick look. Um, but group A... Um, I can't really look past India and Pakistan making it out, out of those groups. I think Canada, Ireland and USA, yeah, they could all cause 
one upset possibly like i can see ireland maybe getting a bit of an upset win but will they do enough to get out of that group and be top two highly doubtful uh group two i want to say australia and, and, and england um namibia and Oman. i don't think really have much of a chance in that group i think scotland again could come in and do a bit of an upset i think england plays scotland in the first game um and scotland always love to beat england so that's going to be the the biggest game for for them in my opinion uh group c i am actually going to go with west indies and new zealand even though there could be an afghanistan upset in there i think west indies and new zealand are just those consistent teams West Indies, you know, playing at home, really have a point to prove because, I mean, they weren't in the last ODI World Cup, were they? They, they, they really have a point to prove as, as, as a, as a cricketing nation right now. And then Group D, um, I am going to go with South Africa and Bangladesh. Um, is my twist. I would have normally gone with Sri Lanka, but. Bangladesh, I think, have real good quality. I was really impressed with Bangladesh at the last World Cup. Um, I'm not sure how that is going to transfer to their T20 play, but I think they just have some real key um, and, and and like real top class players. I think particularly looking at you know the likes of Shanto, who's now their captain, a little das can always cause an upset. And then they've got some fantastic bowlers. I mean, Mustafiza Rahman had a fantastic, fantastic IPL for, for CSK before going on to international duty. And with him and Shakib Al Hassan, as we talk about Shakib, he's one of the best players in the world, one of the best all rounders in the world. I think as we're talking about spin, he is going to be so vital for for for, for Bangladesh, and and I think they could pip it uh, to, to to Sri Lanka. Yeah, what his form think? is his form is very crucial, isn't it, to Bangladesh? Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at groups um, one, two, and three, and I feel like it is more, or is it Group A, B, and C? Group A, B, and C, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, group A, I mean, India and Pakistan, they're going to win. You can guarantee them wins against the USA and Canada. Um, so that already puts them as favourites in terms of going through. And then Ireland is the only sticking one. Group B, England, Australia, again, there's no real worries there. They're going to win at least two of their games. Um, when you get to Group C with West Indies, Afghanistan and New Zealand being the favourites, I'm at the moment favouring Afghanistan over New Zealand, which again, New Zealand will probably do really well. I'm just looking at that spin and thinking Afghanistan have a better chance of beating New Zealand which is quite an out there prediction, but there we go. But then Group D, that's the group of death, isn't it? Because you look at South Africa, they've got the Netherlands in the group and the Netherlands have won more games against South Africa in World Cups than South Africa have um, against each other. Um, and then also Sri Lanka, you never know what's going to happen. Bangladesh, unpredictable. So that is the hardest group. Um, Nepal kind of just they're not going to win are they so I reckon it's probably going to be South Africa and I'm also going Bangladesh I think Bangladesh versus Sri Lanka there are a few more favorable matchups for Bangladesh for me I mean Bangladesh not so long ago beat England in the 2020 series 3-0 so they've got the players to do it um it'll be interesting to see how that goes what about you James I'm going same but I am actually backing Sri Lanka over Bangladesh I think they've Fair got enough. so many um so many bowling options that they can actually stack the batting quite deep. And I think yeah. that'll have quite a big impact in a, in what could be like a few low scoring match that'll decided uh, that'll decide a, a few, a few kind of results. So um, yeah, I'm going for Sri Lanka. So should we talk team, about, yeah. um, so it was top run scorer, top wicket taker, and then just exciting one to watch. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, Ben, do you want to go first? Well, I, I'm a bit gutted because my excited one to watch in Jake Fraser McGurk, who was outstanding in the IPL, by the way, hasn't been picked for the Australia squad. Mm -hmm. Australia have gone with a more um, tried and tested route for, for, for their team. Um, for my leading run scorer, I mean, there are just so many players. I mean, you've got 20 teams with 15 players per squad. So there are just so many players to, to choose from. Um, but I 
I'm going to say Yashazri Jaiswal as my top run scorer. I think especially if India get their way into the playoffs, he is in such good form. Um, was a bit quieter than we expected in the IPL, but still took Rajasthan Royals and helped them go a long way in this tournament. I would go for an England player, but I don't want to uh, jinx it. So that's why I'm going with Yashas Vijay as well instead, um, because yeah. I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, Zach, who's your run scorer? Um, for the one day cup that happened last year, I went with Joss Butler and he ended up averaging about 11. Um, but I kind of want to go with Joss Butler again. I just think at the top of the order in 2020, it's slightly different. The, in terms of top run scores, for me, it's got to be someone who's in the top order and it's got to be someone who's going to make it to the semi finals. So I look at Joss Butler for England, Jaiswell for, for India, South Africa, maybe Aidan Markram. I don't know. Um, and then Australia, it could be David Warner. I mean, he seems to do well in these tournaments, in the IPL, whatever. So it could be David Warner as well. But yeah, I think I'm I'm going to stick with Joss Butler. Come on, Joss Butler. What about you, James? Um, So I think highest run scorer, I'm going to go for Travis Head. Okay. Um, I think he's going to be playing at the top of the order. And I think it's going to take the ability to be good against pace in the power play and spin. And that's why I'm going for him over Virat Kohli because we've seen Virat Kohli slow down against spin quite a lot. So um, I think, yeah, Travis Head is who I'm going for for top run scorer. Top wicket taker, I'm going to go for... um, Oh, this is really difficult, actually. Uh... I think I'm going to go for Bumrah um, because I think just his slow, like, you know, when he does off cutters and stuff and on a slow pitch, they actually turn like off breaks. Mm. I think he'll have quite a few dismissals like that. So even though we think spin's going to have a massive impact, I'm going for a seamer as my high, highest wicket taker. Um, and then one to watch. I think I'm going to go for Noor Ahmad for, um, mm-hmm. Afghanistan. Afghanistan. I think his, his, his left arm spin is so impressive. It's got very similar action to Rashid Khan, um, and he's he's just very high ability. So he's going to be my one to watch. Nice. I like how you've just gone on, gone in the straight and just done all, all three there. So um, yeah, well, why yeah. not? There we go. Um, my my wicket taker then in, in that case. Um, I'm just so excited to see him back, but I'm going to go Joffre Archer. Um, it's been a long time. Mm. We have talked about how um, we think spin's going to play a big factor, and I was going to look at Rashid uh, uh, at Rashid as the, you know the leading uh, best T20 bowler in the world right now. But something about Jofra Archer on the big stage, if he can avoid all fish tanks for the length of the World Cup and and, yeah. and not be injured, don't play um, golf. Don't play golf. Nothing. He has to be wrapped in bubble wrap the entire time. Um, yeah, I think we can see big things from from Joffrey Archer. Um, just his raw pace, I think, uh, as well. His cutters and his slower ball and his change ups are 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 fantastic. Um, my one to watch. Um, I mean, he had a sort of a breakout. Um in the previous T in the previous ODI World Cup. So I'm not really sure if we can have him as a one to watch, but I'm gonna go Ratchin R- R- Ravindra. I think he's just phenomenal um and 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 always can can play well. Yeah. Um bowling wise, most wickets there are the obvious ones in like Mitchell Stark, Jasper Brumra, for example. Uh it's probably gonna be one of them. Uh but I do think Adil Rashid could be up there. He tends to take loads of wickets in the West Indies. Maybe someone like Adam Zampa from Australia. He tends to do well, uh, get loads of wickets. So it's going to be someone who generally just takes loads of wickets. <laughs> um, there's normally someone different who ends up as bowler. It could be Kagisa Rabada, for all we know. Um, but yeah, I think the safe bet is someone like Jasper Bumra or, or Adam Zampa. And then one to watch, I'm actually going to go with Tristan Stubbs. I feel like this could be a breakout on the international arena for him. Um he could win quite a few games for South Africa. So, yeah, Tristan Stubbs. But, yeah, it's going to be an exciting tournament um, all to play for. I mean, a lot of the teams 
in the in the in, who are already like test match nations they they're looking like the favorites but it's so good that we've got some of these associate nations ending up playing in the world cup and hopefully over time those nations will get better more teams will get added and it will be um even bigger global event because this is what we want to see we want to see cricket grow um because then we get more subscribers because more people like cricket so that's the key but if you haven't subscribed yet that's a good point click that button it's free you can also like for free as well and if you want to help us out even further you can pay a little donation and become a member and there's a join button that you can use um, below also if you've got any of your predictions who you think is going to be the top run scorer or top wicket taker if you think we've done anything wrong made any wrong predictions leave it in the comments and we'll be sure to reply um we love reading the comments so keep those coming but thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one